Yes, man. Today, we're going to watch Newfoundland and Labrador in the Second World War. Overseas forces, man. Welcome back and ting and ting and ting. I'm Mr. Giant. Back with another one for all your ting, you know what I mean? We're going to go on straight into watching this vibe. You see how the Newfoundland and Labrador, Labradorians, uh, what their contribution was in the Second World War. Let's go. Newfoundlanders and Labradorians served at sea, on land, and in the air during the Second World War. Some fought on the front lines in Europe, Africa, and Asia. Others joined non-combatant forces, like the Merchant Navy, which transported essential goods to Allied ports, or the Overseas Forestry Unit, which supplied the timber products that were vital to the war effort. Newfoundland and Labrador did not impose conscription during the war, so all of the men and women who served did so willingly. They enlisted to help defeat the Nazis, but they also served to earn military wages, a rare luxury in a country still reeling from the Great Depression. When the Second War... The Great Depression... I guess it was worldwide and stuff. I never heard my my mom and uh, and the older generation in my country talk about the Great Repre uh, Oppression, <laughs> the Great Recession there, the <laughs> Great Oppression, Freudian slip. Anyway, <laughs> I didn't hear them talk much about that. But Dad used to talk about the Second World War a lot, and he supposedly served somehow uh, there. That he said, you know showed me some bump on his head, you know, that he got while well, riding some jeep somewhere, which eh, it's a tall tale, I think. But uh, it's amazing how so many uh, places have, they sent people to the Second World, but you never hear about their contributions, you know what I mean? You always hear about the larger countries' contributions, but never like the smaller countries' contributions as the you know what they did and what their people sacrificed in the in the Second World War. So it's really cool that I get to watch this, you know, about uh, about Newfoundland and Labrador. So let's keep on. Let's see what their contributions were. World War broke out in September 1939. Many people in Newfoundland and Labrador wanted to serve overseas. The country did not have any armed forces of its own, so the commission of government allowed volunteers to join other allied forces. Britain's Royal Navy was the first to recruit in Newfoundland and Labrador. On September 14, 1939, it put out a call for 625 experienced fishermen and sailors. They would serve in the Navy's northern patrol. It protected Atlantic shipping lanes from enemy attack. At the time, Winston Churchill was first Lord of the Admiralty. He took a special interest in recruiting Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. He called them the hardiest and most skillful boatmen in rough seas who exist. He also added that the men longed for employment. The response was enthusiastic and volunteers came from all over the country. Interest was strongest in the outports where most men had grown up handling boats. The first draft of 198 recruits left St. John's for Liverpool on November 27, 1939. By the end of January, the Royal Navy had reached its goal of 625 sailors. It was so impressed with the quality of sailors from Newfoundland and Labrador that it began to recruit another 2,000 volunteers, this time for general naval service. The men were dispersed throughout the Navy and fought in every theater of war. Some served on mine layers in enemy waters, others swept for mines in friendly waters. Still more manned the landing ships that brought Allied invasion troops to Normandy, Sicily, and North Africa. But most served in the Battle of the Atlantic. They worked aboard escort vessels that helped Allied convoys deliver vital supplies to Allied ports. The work was dangerous, and the sailors had to be on constant lookout for German U-boats and warships. 
Casualties were high in the Royal Navy, and about 350 Newfoundlanders and Labradorians died during the war. Close to 3,000 had enlisted. You know, I keep hearing about Labrador, yeah, and it's a Newfoundland and Labrador. Was it 19? Correct me if I'm wrong, because from one of the other videos I watched, were they like uh, integrated into Canada like in 1949? Uh, I seem to think that, I don't know why that uh, yes stuck in my mind, but you know, before that, there's, there's somebody, yeah, I know, I know some of you all watch this, so some of the Newfoundlanders watch this, uh, these videos with me, and thank you all for watching it with me, but suggest some uh some videos i could watch about newfoundland before the integration into canada so i could watch it because you know i want to know more about it and that's the thing i remembered as a kid uh, that's why i didn't make the correlation between canada and newfoundland because it seems like they were like separated uh, when i was being taught about them back then you know or they they, they emphasized that part of it you know what i mean but let's keep watching comment down below Help me up on your history because I like to hear from the people who are from there about the history rather than read a book that's written by somebody else from another culture about them, you know what I mean? In keeping with Newfoundland and Labrador's seafaring traditions, more volunteers joined the Royal Navy than any other single branch of the armed forces during the Second World War. After the Royal Navy's first recruiting drive ended in the fall of 1939, Britain's Royal Artillery began to enlist volunteers from Newfoundland and Labrador. Things moved quickly and the first draft of 400 recruits left St. John's for Liverpool on April 14, 1940. Other drafts quickly followed, and by the end of 1940, about 1,400 Newfoundlanders and Labradorians had enlisted in the Royal Artillery. Unlike the Navy, though, which dispersed its recruits across the globe, the artillery grouped all the Newfoundlanders and Labradorians in two regiments, which it named for their country. The 166th Newfoundland Field Regiment served in Britain, North Africa and Italy. The 59th Newfoundland Heavy Regiment defended England's coastline for three years before fighting in France, Belgium, the Netherlands and Germany. Before the war ended, about 2,300 Newfoundlanders and Labradorians had fought with the Royal Artillery. 87 died in service. Shortly after VE Day on May 8, 1945, the Royal Artillery began to send the Newfoundlanders and Labradorians home. The 59th Newfoundland Heavy Regiment officially disbanded in August of 1945. The 166th followed suit in October. The Royal Air Force also recruited in Newfoundland and Labrador, although on a much smaller scale than the Navy and artillery. By the time the war ended, about 700 men had enlisted as airmen or ground staff. They worked all over the world and in numerous roles. Some joined ground crews as electricians and mechanics, others were aviators. They flew over the ocean to keep an eye out for enemy vessels. They carried out air raids over enemy held territory and they defended Britain from aerial attack. Some of the aviators served in a unit named for their country, the number 125 Newfoundland Squadron. The Air Force added the name Newfoundland to the unit after it received half a million dollars from the Commission of Government in 1941. It also named 12 of the squadron's fighter planes after 12 Newfoundland communities. Some men from Newfoundland and Labrador also served in the squadron, but most of its aviators came from Britain and its various dominions. The number 125 Newfoundland squadron was a night fighter unit. From 10 p.m. until midnight, its airmen patrolled the skies for enemy aircraft and naval vessels. Before the war ended, the squadron destroyed about 44 enemy aircraft and it damaged 20. The unit disbanded on November 20th 1945. Newfoundlanders and Labradorians also joined other Allied forces during the Second World War. Most notable was the Canadian military. It recruited about 1,200 men into its Navy, Army, and Air Force. 
More than 500 women from Newfoundland and Labrador also served in three branches of the Canadian Armed Forces. The Canadian Women's Army Corps, the Women's Royal Canadian Naval Service, and the Women's Division of the Royal Canadian Air Force. The Air Force was the first military organization that enlisted women in Newfoundland and Labrador. In the spring of 1942, recruiters arrived at St. John's, Grand Falls, and Corner Brook. They accepted women between... So, you know, I, I'm watching this year and I'm wondering, okay, so, you know, Canada is French and British, right? You have the two different uh, sections. The Newfoundlanders, where were their ancestries uh, from originally? Was it a combination of both, or did they come from mainly British uh, origin and stuff like that? Comment down below, let me know, let me know. I want to hear from you all, okay? Ages of 21 and 49 who could pass a medical examination and had a grade 11 education. That requirement was later lowered to grade 8. But women were barred from service if they were married, had dependent children, or had permanent jobs in the civil service. Initially, service women could work in one of nine trades as telephone operators, clerks, stenographers, cooks, transport drivers, equipment assistants, fabric workers, hospital assistants, or in an administrative capacity. Before the war ended, the force made 65 of its 102 trades available to female recruits. By the end of the war, the Air Force had enlisted 260 women from Newfoundland and Labrador. In 1943, two other branches of the Canadian military began to recruit women in Newfoundland and Labrador. About 200 joined the Canadian Women's Army Corps. 74 others joined the Women's Royal Canadian Naval Service. Although their work helped to bridge the gap in gender inequality, the women who enlisted for military service also faced discrimination. Service women earned smaller salaries than their male counterparts. They were not allowed to serve on the front lines, and they only received allowances for dependent parents and siblings, not for their spouses. Also serving overseas, but not part of the armed forces, were the thousands of men and women who joined the Merchant Navy and the Newfoundland Overseas Forestry Unit. Merchant Mariners played an important role in the Second World War. They worked aboard non-military vessels that transported essential food, equipment, and personnel to Britain and other allied countries. It was dangerous work because enemy submarines, warships, and fighter planes often attacked merchant vessels in an effort to cut off supply lines. Despite the risks, recruitment in the Merchant Navy was high in Newfoundland and Labrador. About 10,000 volunteers joined the service before hostilities ended. Most served on British ships. Britain relied heavily on imports. Without a strong merchant navy, it would likely experience food and other shortages during the war. As a result, the British government put out a call for volunteers from Newfoundland and Labrador soon after hostilities broke out. Thousands answered the call. Most were older men or teenaged boys who weren't eligible to serve in the armed forces. Women also joined and many served as stewardesses on passenger ships. Theirs was essential yet dangerous work. Before the war ended, enemy forces sunk more than 5,000 Allied merchant Ooh. ships and killed at least 333 of Newfoundland and Labrador's mariners. Newfoundland and Labrador also sent about 3,600 loggers overseas during the Second World War. These men formed the Newfoundland Overseas Forestry Unit. Cut off from its usual sources of imports, Britain experienced a severe timber shortage just two months after the war started. Although there were plenty of forests in the United Kingdom, there weren't enough loggers to meet the increased demand. Of immediate concern was the coal industry. It was central to Britain's wartime economy, but it depended on a steady supply of wooden frames to keep the mines running. On November 9, 1939, Britain asked Newfoundland's Commission of Government to recruit 2,000 loggers to work in the United Kingdom's forests. 
The first draft of 350 men sailed from St. John's to Liverpool on December 13, 1939. By mid-February, the entire unit had arrived and started to work in forests extending from southern England to the Scottish Highlands. The British government released the loggers from their contracts when hostilities ended in 1945. The Commission of Government created a civil re-establishment program for returning troops. It gave them a temporary allowance and it also helped them find new jobs or return to old ones. The program also provided pensions and medical treatment for disabled veterans who could no longer work. However, the government did not recognize returning loggers and merchant mariners as veterans because they had not served in the armed forces. It was not until the year 2000 that the Canadian government made both groups eligible to receive benefits and pensions. Wow, that's pretty cool to know there. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll be honest too about that. I used to think of Newfoundland as this mythical place, you know, not that it, uh, I didn't think it was real, but it just seemed there was something mystical about that place, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put that on my bucket list for sure, you know, just because of uh, the warmth to see that is exhumed from those people, you know what I mean? And of course, you know, they, they have a lot more in common with us islanders, too. Bucket list that bad boy. Anyway, man, thank you all for watching this with me. You all take care of each other, all right? Cool running. Hey, link in the description as usual. Check it out.